My True Ghost Story The Haunted Farmhouse Story by Tony Capo Bianco Welcome to the Haunted Half Moon Inn. This old colonial farmhouse was built in the late 1700s. Over the past few centuries, many different people have lived and died there, and it seems that some of them have never left. It's a place, the gravity of which is so strong, where not even death is strong enough to separate the occupant spirits from the house. It is an ominous place, where one may be dead and yet live. At this crossroads between the physical and spiritual realms, nightmares manifest into reality. The old farmhouse located in New York's Hudson Valley is and has been occupied by a sinister presence. Some believe that the presence is that of evil inhuman spirits that never walked the earth in human form. The chilling experiences of those who lived within its aged walls are pure nightmare fuel. As extraordinary and hard to believe as the stories about the Half Moon Inn may seem, they are true. A truly remarkable aspect about the haunting of the old farmhouse separates it from many other purportedly haunted houses and places. The noteworthy aspect is the unusually high number of paranormal phenomena experienced by a significant number of individuals. In many ghost stories, the unexplained phenomena are often experienced by one or two people in the family that's living in a ghostly place. In other famous accounts, such as the Amityville Haunting, only one family reported having paranormal activity in the house. My dad's old haunted farmhouse, once known as the Half Moon Inn, is a more rare case. Not only did my dad and most of his immediate family experience the haunting, but so too did his extended family and friends. Not only that, but to my knowledge, every family that has lived in that malevolent house after my dad moved out has experienced terrifying spirit activity as well. The many people who experienced and suffered paranormal activity there can verify the veracity of these accounts. Out of respect for the privacy of the current owners of the old farmhouse, the name of the town has been changed. However, the following events, though perhaps seemingly inexplicable, are 100% true. The old farmhouse was my dad's home for several years in the 1960s. Along with his two brothers, his mother, and his father, my dad moved from Queens, New York, to Junction Ridge, New York. They left the hustle and bustle of New York City for the greener pastures of upstate New York. The colonial-style farmhouse was supposed to be their dream home, They traded in the congested city life for the wide open spaces of the charming Hudson Valley. Rather than being confined to their front stoops in a concrete jungle, they found themselves free to explore and cultivate many acres of land. The property, filled with grass fields and trees, was beautiful. The house, though old, was spacious. It was considerably larger than their previous house in Queens. As liberating as country life was, it came with new great responsibilities. The property was a farm, and my dad and his brothers had to quickly learn to become farmers. My dad was around 11 or 12 years old at the time. While it may sound insane by today's cultural standards, my grandfather, who ran a trucking business in the city, put his three sons in charge of operating the farm. My father was the middle child. His elder brother was around 16 years old. The three city boys were responsible for cutting hay, feeding chickens, cows, and horses, and milking the cows. 
the needs of the animals and the farm meant that the boys, in addition to going to school, had to wake up before the sun rose each day. Whether they were afraid of the paranormal and preternatural activity or not, the cows had to be milked, and all the other animals needed to be fed. A cow that isn't milked experiences pain, and they'll moo to let you know it. The strange incident started out small at first. Both my dad and my uncle attested to these facts. Family members would put down a set of keys, looked away and then looked back again, only to find that the keys had vanished. They'd look around to see if they had accidentally knocked them onto the floor, but there would be no trace of them. The keys would then mysteriously show up a few hours or days later in the most unexpected places. Keys weren't the only small objects that would be moved around. Ultimately, these objects would often turn up on the opposite side of the house in strange places that they didn't normally check, like on the top of a cabinet, high out of reach. The kinds of places where the lost objects were discovered were often places that took effort to get to. They weren't the kind of places that you would absentmindedly misplace something. At first, my dad thought that the misplaced objects seemed strange and curious, but that the incidences could have been the product of forgetfulness or trick of the mind. It didn't seem like a big deal, and besides that, he was too busy going to school and farming to dwell on the seemingly trivial subject. Over time, however, small things such as moved objects, feeling a cold chill, and hearing toilets flush when no one was in the bathroom, transformed to bigger, more frightful levels. My dad, his brother, and their mother heard footsteps on the stairs, followed by the unmistakable sound of someone walking around upstairs. They would go upstairs to check it out, and they'd find that no one was there. Footsteps walking up and down the stairs became a nearly daily occurrence. They would hear the phantom footsteps when they were downstairs, as well as when they tried to rest in their beds upstairs at night. It became common to hear the inexplicable sound of footsteps walking to the bathroom, and then hear the toilet flush. Sometimes this would happen when my dad was all alone in the house. Other times, this activity would occur when the family was together in one room. Like much of the scary paranormal activity, it didn't matter if you were alone or not. Either way, it continued to happen with an unnerving regularity. It didn't take long for the paranormal activity to increase to terrifying levels. They saw full-bodied apparitions, heard disembodied evil voices, and at times there were physical assaults. Things got so bad that the family of five eventually slept together in the same room. They were too afraid to be alone in that house. In the future, if you're interested, I'd like to elaborate on the escalating horror that my dad experienced in that haunted house. Until then, I'd like to share my ghostly experience at that house with you first. A most peculiar observation about the old farmhouse is that, in all of the decades since my dad and his family moved out of that house, the various owners seemed to have quarantined themselves to a tiny part of the house. The small part of the house where the owners chose to live was an addition to the original colonial-era house. Facing the house from the road, the new addition was on the left side. Some years after my grandfather sold that house, he stopped by to check on the family that he had sold the house to. 
He had been curious as to whether or not they had experienced anything strange there over the years that they had lived there. The lady that owned that house told my grandpa that the house was haunted and that her daughter had been assaulted by a spirit. The lady explained that the haunting was so severe that she struck a deal of sorts with the evil spirits. She built the new addition to the house so that the menacing ghosts might leave her alone. This was the reason that the addition operated as a self-contained apartment. It included a new but small kitchen, living area, bathroom, and bedroom. The addition was purposely built to keep it separate from the original house. Several different families have bought and moved into that infernal house over the years, and every family has chosen to live in the addition rather than in the big, spacious, historical house. The reason that we believe that all of the different families have kept the tradition of living in the small addition is based off of what we have seen. Over the years, since my family lived close by in a neighboring town, we'd periodically drive by to look at my dad's infamous former house. Over the decades, without fail, there were never any lights on in the old, original house. There wasn't a light on for reading, no lights on upstairs or downstairs, and no flickering lights from a TV could be seen. Instead, the only lights came from the newer added-on part of the house. By the light of day, we could see that the original part of the house fell deeper and deeper into disrepair. The white, two-story colonial farmhouse was aged and the paint became ever more chipped each year. It was surreal to behold how the biggest part of the house, the original structure, looked to be abandoned while seeing that the smaller addition was maintained well. It looked every bit as haunted as my family said that it was. Till this very day, just thinking about that old farmhouse gives me the chills. One unforgettable day in the autumn of 1996, I visited the haunted old farmhouse. Before a varsity football game, my best friend Matt sat in the passenger seat in my family's white Jeep Cherokee as I drove to go on an adventure. We had an hour or so to kill before we had to get into the locker room to suit up for the game. Since I was picking him up to head over to the high school and he lived in Junction Ridge, I decided that we'd drive by my dad's old house. It was only a couple of miles away from Matt's house. Having heard my dad tell his stories about that place, Matt was excited to go see it in person. I drove slowly as we drew near the old farmhouse. When we had arrived, I parked the car on the side of the road and shut off the engine. It was daylight, and we didn't expect to see or experience anything. It was just supposed to be a quick adventure. We sat in the jeep for a few minutes as we watched the house. Suddenly, a cold chill ran through my bones as the atmosphere abruptly changed. I looked nervously at Matt and asked, Hey, do you feel that? The very thick, heavy, and oppressive air? Yeah, man, I... I feel it, anxiously replied Matt. It's as if he had read my mind. The air was similar to the thickness of a day with 100% humidity, except instead of moisture filling the atmosphere, every negative human feeling had taken the water's place. It's difficult to accurately convey the experience. It felt unnatural. I'd have to say that the suffocating atmosphere is best described as unadulterated evil. Perhaps this was but a foretaste of what damned souls experience for an eternity in hell.
Somehow, I just knew that we were in the presence of something inhuman, something evil, something that desires to terrorize and harm us. While I did not see any otherworldly form, every fiber of my being was absolutely certain that we were not alone. All of a sudden, without warning, my engine attempted to turn over. It was the sound that an engine makes when a car won't start on a bitterly cold day. The engine rapidly turned on and off while producing a clicking sound, but the car did not start. Matt and I quickly shot bewildered and frightened looks at each other. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end. It was as though the hairs on my body would have run far away from that place if such a thing were possible. My hands had been nowhere near the keys in the ignition. The hands of Matt, who remained motionless right beside me, never moved an inch. The engine had clearly tried and failed to turn itself on. The engine had sputtered as it attempted to start, and it did so without the aid of any human hand turning the keys in the ignition. Cars don't simply start by themselves. Some invisible force or entity must have begun to start the car. While I'm not certain whether or not keyless ignition or remote car starters existed in 1996, I am quite certain that our car didn't possess those features. My eyes widened as I yelled, Dude, what the hell was that? Matt's face tensed up as he replied, I don't know. Just get the hell out of here. Shaken, I reached for the keys in the ignition and started the engine. I became hyper aware of my surroundings as adrenaline coursed through my veins. With a heavy foot, I pressed the gas pedal and raced out of there. While I don't particularly remember the football game that we played in that night, I've never forgotten our ghostly experience from that day. My dad's stories of his time at that old farmhouse are far more terrifying than my own encounter with the evil spirits that reside there. His true scary tales could fill an entire book. I can't imagine what it must have been like for him to live in that haunted farmhouse when he was but a boy. It must have been beyond traumatic. It almost certainly left a lifelong mark on him and his brothers. After living there, they would never see the world the same way again. They would never doubt the existence of spiritual beings, or whether or not there is life after death. Unless you've experienced the unseen world yourself, you can't really grasp what it's like. People have had paranormal experiences in that house that are far more frightening than anything that you've seen on TV or in a movie. It was my dad's dreadful experiences with the evil spirits at the old farmhouse, along with my own experiences there, that inspired this YouTube channel. The Haunted Half Moon Inn YouTube channel is named after the sinister house in Junction Ridge, New York. That house and the stories about it scared me when I was a child. My dad's stories about his time there gave me many nightmares through the years. Perhaps these stories may haunt your dreams as well. The old farmhouse is a real haunted house, and the scary ghost stories that happened there are true. In this case, reality is truly more frightening than fiction. Until next time, always remember, just because you don't see them doesn't mean that they aren't there. I hope that you enjoyed your stay here at the Haunted Half Moon Inn. 
The master requests that you consider supporting me and the inn by becoming a slave. I mean, a patron of mine on Patreon. The Half Moon Inn needs your support to keep the doors open. You wouldn't want the residents here to feel forgotten and abandoned, would you? Creating quality scary stories to share with you is very important to me. Running this inn of horror is a passion of mine, and I would truly appreciate your support. The world is hurting. It needs more horror. Help me to heal the world through horror. Together, with your help, we could haunt this world one home at a time. Until next time, always remember, just because you don't see them doesn't mean that they aren't there.